Breaking news and useless news. Popular Facebooker Isabel has gotten hacked by a nefarious hacker. Identity unknown. More at 8. So, yeah, um... Uh, yeah, so Susan got hacked on her Facebook by some dickhead and was just like, just like I don't fucking know, I don't like popular people or some shit like that. So... Yeah, just go back to her, go back to her page and the new one, I guess, and then like it if you want more content and more funny stuff and more uplifting positive positivity in the world of negativity. Um, that's all I have to say. Yeah. Bye. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, that's gonna. I need, I need to get my voice out myself. <laughs> okay, we got number one. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's start with a bit of your past, and if you feel uncomfortable exposing some of your, I guess, a little bit of your past, well, with whoever's gonna watch this, mm -hmm. uh, you could keep the exposure to a minimum and to a maximum. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Um. How much does your family care about the illness in present context and in the past? Um, okay. Present, it's like, it's there. We we know about it. But my mom still thinks it's not, like, unnecessarily real and stuff. So she, she's um, not supportive, I guess. Because she doesn't, she doesn't think it's real. So, you know, you know, medication and stuff, it's like, oh, why are you taking that? You don't really need to take it when I really do need to take it. And past then, it was kind of like, we never even knew about it. Like, well, I knew about it, but they they had no clue what, like, any mental illness was or anything like that. Uh, yeah. And in present context right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I said. I answered that. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're aware that having this disorder has made you sort of a pseudo-celebrity in, on the internet and Facebook specifically. Uh-huh. Uh, how's it affected you in any positive or negative like, way? positive i guess it's more like i'm more encouraged to basically speak out about this sort of thing i want to be able to talk about it and openly and like people are like oh i want to ask you this it's like okay you could ask me i'm not gonna get like offended or anything like that like i'm not gonna be like oh sh sh triggered you know what i mean yeah yeah um i want people to be just open about it ask me whatever they want and just you know i want to be able to help people because you know this disorder is really like kind of hard to diagnose and people are like oh what if i have it like yeah you can openly like ask me and then i could like we we what's it called um just tell you go to a therapist or something if your symptoms are kind of like on um similar to mine i guess or something um what was the other one uh how does it affect you in a negative light or in a positive okay, light? yeah negative way it's kind of like i feel like i'm pressured to keep up this sort of positive like little i'm better now so i have to like you know tell people it's okay you'll get you'll get better when sometimes i feel really terrible and you know sometimes i get down really really down and yeah i just feel like that's kind of bad because i feel like i need to live up to people's expectations and stuff all right next question this with the pseudo celebrity power you have right now i'm gonna call it that um how has your personal your personal life been affected in any way um let's see personal life effect well yeah just my attitude mostly that's my main thing that's been affected um let's see mindset it's helped me my therapy kind of ish because like i'm able to be like oh i have a bunch of friends because a lot of people talk to me so it's like okay you know i'm more supported and stuff um dating wise like people have been like kind of like hey i want to date you and i'm like no you have no clue who i am that's kind of weird <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like, um, <clears throat> they just kind of, like, get this internet personality and they're just like, all right, this is you, that's it. There's, like, no, it's, like, you kind of put up this sort of, like, act, kind of, to be this person on the internet and then you get liked and then there's way more to the person than actually, like, just the thing you put up in the internet. Okay. Now that you've gotten a bit more comfortable, can you go in? Can you go into however much you can of your history with the illness and how early it popped up, or a potential trigger that is is the center of it? Okay, uh, I re I recognize like now that I look back, I see symptoms when I was a kid. Like I'd be really depressed, like at age eight, nine. 
I was like up at night questioning like what why am I alive why this it sounds really bad I know <laughs> but like you know at that age you're not supposed to be thinking that sort of thing you're supposed to be like hey what am I gonna have for like to what am I gonna do tomorrow <laughs> type of thing yeah like I'm gonna play video games I'm gonna you know go out with my friends and like I don't know play jump rope or something but like I, I was thinking about like life in general and you know just really weird depression came on really early and around age 10 I was really mood swings like well anger was like a really big one I'd get really upset over absolutely like everything and then around age 13 it was a lot of depression uh sometimes I'd go like kind of hypomanic I guess that's what you would call it now um it'd be like racing thoughts and I had there was this one time where I basically kind of took a knife and I was like I'm gonna stab myself and I stabbed my hand and I was like why did I do that I don't know I just lost my you know mind sort of in a sense I guess because you know you have racing thoughts you're just like all these things are like <laughs> yeah just too real <laughs> I know uh yeah it's really it's really edgy <laughs> but it's 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 reality that's what it was and uh you know I hurt myself a lot and because racing thoughts are just kind of like do this do that do this and yeah i would act on them sometimes because like well on the bad ones like hurting yourself or like sometimes i want to calm down so i'd like hurt myself uh let's see i've almost okay i've attempted suicide at least like five times and with the illness that's actually really common to attempt suicide because uh you go up and down a lot so you go from like being really happy and great and you think your life is amazing and then you feel like dying and then that down that downfall is like the worst because people are like, oh, so what's wrong with me? Kind of type of thing. So then they like commit suicide or they try to commit suicide. So yeah, I've attempted five times. I can't. I'm not gonna say like how exactly, but like I uh, people ideas. Yeah, <laughs> but like five times already. And uh, the last one was the worst one. Like, uh, I, you know, you were there and all that. Um, but yeah, that kind of like opened my mind to basically be like more positive now at least but yeah the illness has always been there it's really difficult to deal with and to diagnose but i only got diagnosed this year so yeah okay uh let us like tone it down a little bit more so you, i guess not get you out of your i guess comfort zone anymore because okay. now it's just pretty far already now i'm gonna pull you even further away okay. I'm, I'm completely bullshitting you okay do you think your, your illness has affected you your, has affected your sex drive in any way like, um, either from young age to where it's supposed to, supposed to pop up, like, mm -hmm. in middle school, usually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it started pretty early, kind of, I guess. Like, around 11, 10? Uh, yeah, around there, but it kind of went away. Well, it goes away with depression. Like, depression, you don't feel, like, anything. You don't want to do anything. You just want to lay there and do absolutely nothing with your life. <laughs> Yeah, but when you're like really up and stuff, you're like, oh, I want to do this. I want to flirt with that person. I want to do, you know, I just want to talk to this person. You want to be more charismatic and be open and just do all these things. And that's why with uh, people who are bipolar type 1, which are uh, people who go through actual manic phases, which is when you feel like you're on, I don't know, methamphetamine or something, and you're just up and you're not, you don't sleep and you don't do anything. People have like a lot of sex partners and stuff. So it's actually really common mm -hmm. for it to affect your sex drive. So has it affected yours, like, no, in any way? like, I mean, kind of, a little bit, but not to the extent where it's, like, super bad, like, compared to other people. Okay. You constantly cycle through emotions, some of them self-destruct, some of them more positive than others, and your life is generally affected by by that. If But if you were not diagnosed with bipolar at all, like, at any point in time, what mm -hmm. would you blame this on? Um, Probably just me being weak. Because it's like, hey, I'm going back and forth and that's like, that's normal. So I wouldn't think of it as like an illness. I'll just be like, that's normal. Everyone goes through this. So I'm just being kind of like a weak person because I'm just succumbing. Succumbing? Is that the word? Succumb. S-U-C. Succumb. Succumb. Yeah. Succumb. Okay. I can't, I can't English. Um, yeah. That, like I'm going into the moods and just, you know, being weak. And everyone else is like, oh, I go through this too. It's fine. You know, you're, I'm fine. So you're going to be fine. But like, you know, I don't know. Mine's are worse. So I ask this because a lot of people tend to, uh, 
tend to mistake a lot of bipolar depression and a lot of mental illnesses to again that being being weak yeah so what do you have to say to any of them that potentially could have it and are just afraid of become of being seen as weak uh i say nowadays it's pretty much common to have well not common i would i don't want to say common that sounds really bad but like it's more accepting accepted just said whatever and again it's early i'm tired uh it's people are able to basically accept the fact that people have mental illnesses now and stuff like that nowadays at least uh it's more common that sounds bad but it is more common for people to be diagnosed because we have the resources and like the therapy and all that stuff so i say just go for it like don't don't say like i'm weak and stuff because i mean i said that for like about 10 years and i got 10 years later and i got diagnosed with an actual <laughs> illness so i say just go for it go to a therapist go to you know something see someone talk to someone even talk to me like i'm fine with people opening up and messaging me about something and then yeah i'll give you my advice but my main advice is to go seek help even if it's seen as weak and wrong i guess uh maybe if uh if they do end up asking you for help for some serious bright problems uh mm -hmm. try to get your therapist phone, like a number mm -hmm. so you could give them to them so they can have someone to talk to because sometimes those, that's what those people just need yeah 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 like wait okay so you mean my therapist yeah like tell her to uh give you her number or a, oh. like a hotline type of thing yeah, yeah there's call there's... This, call, call this so you're not completely up to love with your fucking thoughts yeah <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of hotlines. I can ask for a hotline, a specific one or something, because I can't necessarily give her number because she's uh, working for her clients and stuff. But I can get I can get like a hotline so people can be like or even a text hotline. If people don't want to talk, they could just text it out or like, you know, basically don't be alone. Yeah. OK. Also, the, the follow up question to the cycling ones being self-destructive and everything. If you never had the, the any of these illnesses to begin with. But in return, your friends had them. How would you deal with any of that? Uh, damn. Well, if you guys had it, I'd be like really supportive, and I'd try to research absolutely everything about it if I didn't know anything about it. Uh, see, the, you know, to the point where I'm seeing documentaries and stuff to be like, all right, this is how they act, this is how they are, brain chemistry, all that stuff. Uh, I'd be supportive. I'd try to like ask them how they're feeling and. You know, if you're going through, like, a depressive type of episode, I'll be like, okay, well, do you want to go out or you just want to stay in? I'm not going to, like, you know, force you to go out. If they want someone to, like, talk to, I'll be there if they want. Uh, what is it? Like, if you feel like you're going to do something wrong, like, you know, harm yourself in any way, just talk to me. I'll be like, all right, I'm on my way <laughs> type of person. Uh, yeah, and if you're going through, like, a hypomanic thing, I wouldn't, like, try to bring you down because that's not how it works you just kind of like roll with it and um you know if you're like spending too much money because that's really common for people with hypomania or manic episodes i'd be like nah man chill <laughs> just you know save your money do this and that and yeah i'll try to like help you out okay so that's how you would deal with people like in the case of any of your friends would have bipolar depression or yeah. how even schizophrenia uh, yeah, like, like any other illness, I'll just research it, try to like understand it and even look for advice like people write, you know, uh, threads and stuff on how to help people. I'll try to like listen to that uh, as my therapist if I ever <laughs> even had a therapist still, if I didn't have it because, you know, other issues, you know, yeah. Okay, uh, now also what, what I asked you to do was to ask some of us some questions to respond to you because I'm pretty sure you're also curious about how we're dealing with your issues because mm -hmm. that's just one side of the battle. Yeah. So you asked, um, is me and Jay, me and my girlfriend, what is it to deal with you and your bipolar disorder? The first thoughts to, to how it is now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when you told us, uh, Jay's answer, when you told us you were bipolar, I didn't really know how to take it because I didn't realize how serious it was till you explained. It wasn't something bad, but it wasn't something good. Good. I felt helpless because I didn't know if I was being a good friend or a bad one. But the way I see it now is that I'm happy that you're. I'm happy to see that you're. You're just hope in your eyes right now, and there, and that you have a lot of people caring for you. That's okay. uh, that's Jay's, Jay's answer, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> then... <laughs> my answer, uh, I've given it many times, is yeah. that try not to. Um, 
like try to find ways to keep yourself preoccupied mm -hmm. don't leave yourself inside of like just a circle of i'm depressed no i'm bipolar yeah. i'm never gonna get help i'm not getting help um and from how i see it from now now to now is crazy bitch then <laughs> crazy bitch now i don't see a fucking difference all right yeah if you're getting help now you could be less of a crazy bitch yeah that's fair <laughs> But in all honesty, I, I didn't I didn't believe in bipolar. I didn't believe mm -hmm. in depression before, because I just again I thought it was one of those people that it's you're weak. You're yeah. you don't know how to handle your own emotions. Mm -hmm. And I was looking it up, and it could be a number of things, including not being able to handle your own emotions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's like oh okay, wow. Uh, I you know human mind your is eyes. fucked. <laughs> human yeah. mind is bad. Yeah. Um. And just with dealing with it, uh, I never had much of a problem, honestly. Mm -hmm. You've made me mad a lot of times, but yeah. uh, it's not different from a friend getting drunk and then ending yeah. up at the, at the side of a bitch And then they have to up. call you and like... Yes, yeah, it's, it's not stuff. that different. Yeah, so, yeah. As, a ten as in, tens in, in terms of dealing with people, it's mm -hmm. not horribly like a burden or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like, eh, my friend's drunk. Eh, my friend's depressed and tried to kill himself. Yeah, that kind of stuff. <laughs> You know. Uh, all right, let's go drive and to help him out. Yeah. All right, let's go drive. Get this fucking ass. Don't, don't let him throw up in my car. <laughs> they yeah. does have emotions. It's not much of a like. Oh no, I can't do for them. It's more just. Yeah, you don't. You don't feel like that type of um like I can't do anything type of thing. Like oh, they're gonna suffer forever. You're like no, they're not. It's just yeah. I gotta help. It's just the thing they're going through. Yeah. Just give it like. Four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, this is a long paragraph of, that, of an answer. Okay. Uh, you asked her, what did you ask her specifically? Uh, just to basically, you know, explain how you felt before when you I got first diagnosed, before even, and up to now, how yeah. she felt. So she answered, so like, I'm not new to having people close to me having mental disorders. I've had a friend before with bipolar 1 and it's kind of, it kind of scared me when Susan told me she was bipolar because, when she was bipolar. Because I knew how much my friend had suffered, and I didn't want her to go through the same thing. It's kind of, of, of a scary feeling, you know? Like knowing someone you care about is going through so much, and you can't do anything about anything about it. As a friend, I want the pain to go away, but I have you accept, accept this as a long-term thing. I love studying mental disorders, so I wanted to know more about, how, about her disorder than I already knew. I have a terrible time of connecting with people emotionally, so I want to provide her with as much information as I could thinking maybe it'll help a little bit. I take mental disorder a lot more seriously because of, it, of because of her situation. I'm always concerned about her. I want to help her as much as I can. To me, she's the same person I met six, six years ago. A lot nicer, actually. I'm not a therapist or anything, but I'm always there for her if she needs to talk or just rant. Yep. <laughs> Ugh, very cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, I don't know what to say about that. I'm just like, yay. Oh, and you can respond to any of it. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm just happy because, like, you know, if other people don't have that support of, like, friends or family when it comes to bipolar or any mental illness, it's kind of just like, oh, whatever. <laughs> people shrug mm -hmm. at it. But, like, I have a really good, like, support of you guys. And then even my family is kind of like, okay, you know. Even my, like, um, cousins and stuff, they're pretty, like... One of my cousins is really... She's a... I think she's majored in psychology. So I could talk to her about stuff and she's um really open to it basically and uh when I first got diagnosed I even told her and she's like, Oh just do this and that, you know, listen to your therapist and all that. Okay. Yeah. Uh speaking of people, uh I also you also asked um to ask any questions about bipolar or depression also on Facebook to yeah. to anyone basically answer. And to all the people who said tag me, I hate you. Oh no, I, I told them you. I told them <laughs> Yeah, I hate you. <laughs> All right, now let's answer some of their questions. Okay. Um, Megan Flick asks, BF has bipolar disorder. He used to be medicated, but it turned out in, turned him into a, a vertebral zombie. Okay? Yeah, zombie. Like, uh, I guess it turned him into a zombie, I guess, emotionally. Yeah. He has one pill left over from 10 years ago if things really get bad, he says. About the only question I have is, how long did it take you to find the balance of medication, and or are you still working on it, finding on, finding on the balance? Uh, It took about... I think it was two months, two months that it, we started, like I started on Wellbutrin and then I started on, that made me manic, so that was really bad. Uh, and then I switched to, is it okay if I give the names? Um, I think it's legal, right? I think it's legal. Yeah, I mean, yes. Yeah, sure. people have made a bunch of videos of it. Like, yeah, so it doesn't matter. Okay. 
Um, then I started on Abilify. That helped, you know, the, it's, it's an antipsychotic. It's supposed to help you not hear voices and be crazy. Um, and then I started on, what was it? Topamax. Topamax actually made me, it, I only tried it a few times, but it made my side hurt. So I needed to stop it immediately because it's, it's a kidney. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> Uh, and then am I triptyline? I think that's what it's called. It's an antidepressant, and I'm taking it with my Abilify. And so far, that's working. It took two months to find that. It took two months to basically, you know, this is what you need. Even my psychiatrist was like, "Hey, uh, this took longer than it should have." You know, people usually find it within a month or something, yeah, or less, I guess. And yeah, it took two months, and that's kind of a long time. But people, there's people who take like years to find the right medication. Um, yeah, two months, and so far it's working, but we might need to change the dosage, that's it. Because uh, it's it's kind of, I'm not being able, I'm not uh, allowed to, I'm not, I can't sleep. So, like, that's supposed to help me sleep. Okay, Megan Victoria asks, could you list the top five things that you do that are misunderstood, you do that are misunderstood, and talk about why it's important to recognize them for what they are? Oh, okay, let's see, misunderstood. The mood swings for one are misunderstood. People assume that it's like, you know, really quick. You know, you go from hypomanic to depression in like a minute <laughs> or like in a second. It's like, that's not how necessarily it works. You kind of go from, I mean, if you're, there's a, something called rapid cycling, which is basically you switching off moods within like a week, which is, which is like, you know, weird because you're not, you're supposed to go through them at least uh, for a month. Even in the in the bipolar world, that's weird. Even that's weird, yeah. Because once you're like, oh no, I'm cycling. <laughs> yeah, you you start cycling. It's not, it's not a good thing. Um, misunderstood. Yeah, like you you go from like you know you switch off really quick. It's not like that. There's um, people who assume bipolar is just being moody, but it's much more than that. It's uh, you are moody, but <laughs> you go through like you know intense feelings of greatness and self-worth and you feel like you're god and then you feel like you want to die and but those are in the span of at least four like uh, a month to six months they can last that long six months okay uh mj taylor asks is there anything specific that helps you personally get through any side effects or symptoms of i guess drugs uh, drugs. Let's see. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, when I first started my Wellbutrin, it was really bad because I had really bad att- like anxiety attacks in the middle of the night. I would I would wake up and feel super anxious. My heart was hammering in my chest. I could not go back to sleep. <laughs> so I would listen to music, and there is a specific song I can't remember the name of it, <laughs> but there was just <clears throat> it was a song from a video game. <clears throat> I can't. Oh my god! I need water. Hold on. Just drink your water. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. I'll put on text like I'm not Susan died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I listened to a song and it was a OST from a video game. I think it was Undertale. Uh, yeah, and it helped a lot because I would start panicking and start, you know, feeling like I was having a heart attack, which is common in anxiety attacks. So I listened to the song. It helped me basically calm down and to the point where I fell asleep. And then for my, what else? Abilify, I didn't feel anything, mo- it's just kind of tinglingness, that's, the, you know, it wasn't that bad. And my triptyline, the same thing, it wasn't too bad. But yeah, the main thing was the, the, was the Wellbutrin, that was the one that gave me the attack, so I just listened to music, talked to my friends, I would help a lot throughout, like, when I was taking it, I would tell you guys how I was feeling. And yeah, that's the main thing I did. Alright, um, Saya, Ryu- Sa- Saya Ryuzaki asks... How do you usually cope when you hit a bad episode or feel anxious and dot dot question mark? Oh, dot dot question mark. Not right. an ellipsis. It's supposed to be an ellipsis. It's three dots. Uh, okay. When I go through anxiety, it's kind of like... Okay, wait, no. Say, say it again. <laughs> How do you usually cope when you hit a bad episode or feel anxious? Okay, yeah. When I have a bad episode, I guess depression... I usually talk to my friends. That's the main thing I need to do. Like, oh, no, I'm feeling bad. I got to go. Like, I need to talk to, like, Melissa, George, or someone. And, uh, yeah, I have to, like, open up about it. You can't really just be like, oh, I'm going through an episode. Okay, whatever. You you have to, like, actually take action and do something about it. 
uh, even if it's depression, you don't feel like doing anything, you kind of have to like open up, ask for help, therapist, anyone. Uh, for anxiety, I kind of just, if I'm having an anxiety attack, I listen to music. And I recently downloaded this app on the phone where you, it's a music rhythm game. So that really helps a lot because it keeps my mind focused on one thing. Uh, I also squeeze my fist when you're having an attack. It kind of puts all the like pressure and everything you feel into one Yes, <laughs> into one little like thing. Uh, breathing is really important when you're having an attack. You have to breathe in and out really like for, I think, breathe in as much as you can through your nose and then exhale slowly through your mouth and kind of like you're blowing out candles. And yeah, that's what I, that's what I do. All right. Charles Nakila asks... Um, I want you. I want to know how others experience this kind of disorder. I have friends who suffer from this kind of disorder, and I want to understand their actions better. Uh, wait. What's the question exactly? She wants to know how, or he. Uh huh. He wants to talk, He wants to know how to understand better oh, what they're going through. Okay. Um, it's really difficult. I would say, if from an outside perspective, to kind of understand what someone is going through when they're bipolar, but. Just kind of, like, in my experience, it's just, you know, really up and down. It, everyone's experience is different, but a lot of us go through the whole mood swings and just, you know, going up and down a lot. Uh, if, you have, if you don't have the right medication, especially, you're going to go up and down a lot. You're going to have, like, psychotic symptoms, which are, like, hearing voices, seeing things. Um, what else? Uh, the, a common symptom is also anxiety. So, you know, you're going to see someone really jittery and stuff. Probably. It depends on the person. But yeah, uh, I would say just research as much as you can about it. Because it's that's I think that's the main thing you got to do is from an outside perspective. Because you can't understand the feeling exactly. So you got to just read stuff, watch stuff. I mean, there's like a bunch of documentaries on like bipolar disorder and how it was before and now. You can watch that. And yeah, that's like, I think that's the main thing you just do. Because you can't understand it fully. Also, a personal note for me is mm -hmm. that try not to keep it on the scientific or yeah, yeah. cruel, emotionless <laughs> research side of it, because yeah. that also been brings people down immensely when, oh, yeah. when, when their disorders like... just boil down to two simple things that they cannot get rid of, mm -hmm. just the brain and the heart. So, yeah. Know, <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, God damn it, Kel. Kellen, Tristan, and Nathaniel Anderson mm -hmm. asks, My aunt and gran are bipolar so as well, so it kind of makes me feel more ellipsis or less alone, I guess. Uh, that, that someone closer to my age actually understands. Uh, I, don't even, I can't even count the amount of assholes that legitimate, legitimately pretend. I've seen legitimately pretending to have these conditions or even covering up in the last couple of years of my life. Parentheses, parentheses. A couple of questions I have are how old are you how old were you when you were diagnosed and were you ever misdiagnosed with something like bipolar dis by BPD mm -hmm. or as ASPD prior to being diagnosed to bipolar? Um I was diagnosed at age 20 which was, you know, I I only got diagnosed about it was about 2 months. What? 2 years. What? No, I got th this year, dude. Oh, it was this year? Yeah. You're 20, right? I'm 20 years old, George. I, what the hell was that? Shut up, I'm living in my own world, all right? <laughs> <laughs> two years. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's been about like two months, three months around. It was around there. It was around early this year. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I got misdiagnosed with uh, social anxiety and dysthymia. Dysthymia is basically an on and off depression, which makes sense because a lot of people who have a uh, What's it called? Bipolar disorder. It makes misdiagnosed with either major depression or some some other form of depression, basically. But it's usually major depression. But she said I couldn't qualify for dysthymia. She was kind of like, I mean, major depression. She was kind of on and off about it, but she was like, no, it. I didn't tell her about me hurting myself. That's why. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I, the, the main thing is I need to commit, like I need to try to commit suicide, which falls into major depression. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So she's like, oh no, it's totally not that. But I was like, uh, I'm lying to you. <laughs> But yeah, uh, social anxiety, dysthymia, uh, and then I got diagnosed with bipolar because that explains the whole anxiety, that explains my on and off depression. Yeah. Alright, um, I think she had a second qu there a question above that. Um, nope, that was just her question. Uh, Iron Tan asks, what can we do as fans to help? Um... <clears throat> 
just as fans i don't i don't really know i don't want to put like again i don't want to put that pressure on people because it's like you're it's one thing to know it from like a standpoint and understand it like just you know from the window yeah but like going in it's like oh crap there is so much it's like it's like you're going into a house and you're just like everything's messed up and you're like wait what it looks really nice from the outside (laughs) yeah and uh as fans i just say i guess whenever i feel down i'm gonna usually post less on my account or i'm gonna be like i'm gonna make some like some cynical stuff so just kind of i guess be supportive of that i mean don't be supportive necessarily the cynicism because like that's that's not good (laughs) that is not good i'm gonna be like that sometimes that's no good that's no good but just you know if if i ever post about needing someone i guess you could you know message me if you want or you can you can check up on me i don't mind that like just be like oh how are you doing and i'll i'll reply when i can because you know i get a lot of messages and it's hard yeah i missed a thousand and six hundred (laughs) and forty seven messages on messenger okay yeah (laughs) um as it is, Marcia Erza Powell, Powell, Powell asks, what brightens up your day? Is it small or something massively positive? P.S. We're here for you, including everyone here, probably. Probably. <laughs> it's cool. probably. It's probably. <laughs> uh, usually, video games help a lot. Like, a lot. Like, even if I'm depressed, I usually play video games and it makes me feel better. Even though Overwatch makes me salty, it also helps me a lot because it, it, uh, it helps my anxiety, too. <clears throat> Because I'm able to focus on one thing and I'm like, I'm going to kill this person. I'm going to kill them with my ultimate and they're going to die. So (laughs) I focus on doing something and it just helps a lot in a positive way, you know? Uh, Big things don't usually happen to give me anxiety. (laughs) Like if it's like a huge thing, it's kind of like, oh no, I need to like prepare for that. I need to do this type of thing. That's how anxiety is. It sucks. (laughs) Here's a thousand dollars. Oh, what do I do with it? Oh, fuck. (laughs) (laughs) I'm happy, but I'm also anxious. All right, uh, Catherine Guzman asks, other than medicine, how, how could, would you cope with your disorder? I know you write poems, but is there anything else that you would do? Um, exercise is a really good way to cope with bipolar disorder because it helps depression and it also helps you, you know, um, basically work out and just feel good when you're hypomanic. Because that's what you do when you're hypomanic. You kind of just have a bunch of energy and you're just like, I'm going to do this and that. And you can just go for a run or something. That helps people. Uh, there's people who can manage it with just exercise alone. Diet is also really important. Um, yeah, for me, I just I guess, that's what I kind of need to do. I need to make a rhythm. I need to you know wake up at a certain time, go to sleep at a certain time, eat at a certain time. It's all it really helps to get like a sort of rhythm and stuff, because it's like constant you know doing the same thing over and over and over again, so you don't just relapse into an episode. Yeah. Right. Um, Celeste Zarate asks, I know someone who's going through this, but he doesn't know how to deal with it. His family does not want to accept that it's a disorder and just want to rub it off as nothing. I hate seeing like this and, and how it's draining him. She's asking um, how to get help for him, mm-hmm. most likely. Um, like, what can she do to help him or her, him, whatever. Yeah, I guess just ask him how he's feeling, like, most of the time. It, sometimes it's gonna, it's gonna irritate him, because it's like, um, if you're going through, like, a... Even depressed or having manic, either or. Or manic, I don't know, whatever type he is. Um, it's gonna irritate him, probably, because it's gonna be like, oh, you don't really care. This is a really common thing. You don't really care. You don't understand. You're never gonna understand. Common thing is also just being paranoid about the people who ask... <laughs> How are you doing? Because it's like, oh, what if they actually, you know, are going to kill me? <laughs> it's really weird, but yeah, it's just paranoia and stuff like that. You could just try to ask him how he's doing. Try to research it on your own, you know, understand it. Um, try to get make him get into like a rhythm of doing things, waking up, eating right. Even if, I know it's like really difficult if you're not, if you're depressed or something, even hypomanic or manic, you kind of just don't want to eat because it's like, I could be doing that. Something way more better than just eating and, you know, actually filling my stomach. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Just try to get him into a rhythm of doing things. Uh, exercise is really important. Talking about how he's feeling is extremely important because you got to figure out what he's, you know, if he's in an episode, if he's not in an episode, you know, just that's as much as you could do i guess as a friend just try to get him into the rhythm try to talk to him understand it 
right. Uh, Jose Angelo Ralmoa asks, is it possible to have bipolar disorder and depression at the same time? Uh, they're both two different things. Bipolar depression, bipolar manic, manic, what is it called again? Manic depression is basically, it's another, it's another name for being bipolar, basically. They switched to be to being called bipolar. But it's, uh, you know, going up and down a lot, moods and swings, paranoia, psychotic symptoms, stuff like that. Depression is just feeling like you're gonna, feeling nothing, feeling guilty, feeling um, sad, crying spells, no crying at all, being really just distant from emotions in general. Yeah, like, they're both two different things, but depression can be a, a part of an episode of bipolar disorder. But they're not, you know, major depression, so dysthymia are different from bipolar. Alright, uh, Yumi Watanabe asks, and um, if it's okay to ask, what is it like to have bipolar disorder? How do you usually cope with anxiety attacks? Being bipolar is kind of weird, because it's like, wait a minute... <laughs> Am I happy? Am I happy? Am I too no. happy? Am I too sad? I don't know. Am I having an episode? I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of living in... It's like... I know you're supposed to get used to it, but you still kind of get scared of certain emotions because it's like, what if I fall into this emotion and it's going to be like a really big one, like a big episode of it. So like, even if I get too happy or excited, it's like, what if I get hypomanic and I don't sleep for days and I start hearing voices again? <laughs> Or it could be like depression. It's like, I'm sad one day. Okay, that's fine. Sad another day. Uh Uh-oh. Sad again. Oh, no. I could get into a rhythm of being sad again and just depression. I'm getting a call. Fuck. Nah. All right. (laughs) Can you put it on silent so it doesn't vibrate? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Whatever. Um, Yeah, it's just, you know, it's kind of difficult to deal with. And when you're first diagnosed, it's kind of like, oh, no, I'm not bipolar. No way. Because you're just like, I'm going to, you know, push away the illness. It's, I'm not really sick, but you are. And then you get used to it, I guess. But it's still living in fear of having another episode, hurting someone close to you. It affects the way you kind of get close to people. Because it's like, you put up this like, I'm fine and everything's okay. But if you fall, they're not going to be able to deal with it. Or maybe they will, but it depends on the person. Yeah. And what was the other one? Anxiety attacks? Uh, yeah, how do you usually cope with anxiety attacks? Uh, I listen to music, play a rhythm game on my phone, or I talk to someone, try to like... Actually, no, that's a lie. I don't talk to people. <laughs> I don't. When I'm having an anxiety attack, I don't. I just shake my leg and I feel like my mind's going like at a thousand miles per hour, like I'm going crazy or something. But yeah, that's the most I can do. It's, they're calling again. What is this? <laughs> All right. Okay. Sony yeah. Bivens asks... Uh, I'm genu- genuinely curious about how your life is with the, with the disorder and what normally happens when it hits. Okay, uh, generally with my my life is just... Right now it's okay. Everything's like not as bad as before. I would go through like really bad mood swings. I'd go up and down a lot. I'd go through periods of really long depression and then just feel like everything's great for like a month and then it'd go back down to depression. But right now it's kind of just moods are more stabilized. Everything's fine, kind of. Um, I still have some symptoms, but, like, they're not all gonna go away. It's not how it works. Uh, what was the other question? That was just the only one. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, Ry- Rylan Kirkham asks, I guess my question would be, while it does sound common, what is it like to have bipolar disorder? Yeah, it's just, it's really weird to have it, like, because it's supposedly common-ish to have bipolar disorder, but people don't seek help for it. It's just a really common thing that everyone, a lot of people in the business world have it. Because when you're manic, you're kind of like, I'm going to do everything and do this and I have a bunch of confidence. So you go into business and it really helps you out. So yeah, but for me, it's just weird and I don't like it. But I mean, I'm getting more receptive of me having it. So I'm like, okay with it right now. Uh, Yeah, that's, I mean... You just kind of have to like cope with it and fall into a rhythm and do your own thing and just take your medication that's super important take it at the same time which i don't do (laughs) but i'm learning how to do it uh yeah it's just you gotta learn how to cope with it all right uh no murakuma asks a friend of mine has bipolar disorder himself and he gets made fun of a lot because of it i tried asking him but he thinks he's scared that i'll that he'll get made fun of by me too if you think 
I think if you upload a video about it, that might be helpful for him for, to understand, uh, understand it more, and that way I can help him more somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think there was a question there. I just it was I thought night, there was a question. No, but yeah, like if he wants to watch the video, then that's cool. Like people are gonna make fun of you. That's the thing. People will actually try to hurt you with this disorder. They're like, oh, you're bipolar, ha ha ha, and they make <laughs> little ha 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 ha. They make jokes about it. They might do that, but I don't know. You guys don't make jokes about it. I, do you? Yeah, I do. Okay, you I do. I do a lot. <laughs> yeah, you do. I don't know, but like, it's... It depends. It's not malice. There's yeah. no malice in there. Yeah, it's but if like, you're doing it like that, then it's kind of like... I don't know. I would stay away from them, honestly, because like, you have a disorder that you're going to live for the rest of your life. You can't have people who are going to be too negative around you, you know? Because it's going to throw you into depression. It's going to throw you into feeling really bad about yourself so you gotta like try to get away from those people and try to be like with people who are positive and are not make they might make fun of you but like it's not in the way where it's like they're trying to really hurt you yeah uh aaron gold their skin asks how did your relationship with your friends change when you had the disorder with it if it even changed at all okay that kind of confused me what yeah no it, i had to finish the rest of the, the, the question <laughs> How did your how did your relationships with to your friends change with it if it cha even changed? Oh, okay, I get it. I get I get it. <laughs> more ghetto, I said. The more you got it. What the fuck? I don't know, man. But right. yeah, I got it. Um, it changed in a way where like I'm more open to you guys now. I can talk about my emotions. Yeah. Little rainbow. Yeah, I can talk about it's not my rainbow. It's shit. I don't give a fuck. Whatever. But yeah, I could I could talk about my like emotions and like. How I feel, what I'm thinking. Oh, if I'm having an attack, you guys usually notice somehow, because like you notice because I'm doing the rubbing thing in my leg or something. Melissa kind of just hears my breathing. I'm like, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm not fine. Um, yeah, and then I don't. I haven't hung out with Jay in a while, so I can't. I can't. No, yeah. schedules don't match up. Yeah. Oh, Which is cool. coming over today, so. Oh, okay. Well, like maybe like I think at twelve, so. Oh. We yeah. catch like an hour beforehand. Yeah um yeah it's changing the way where i can just talk to people and they're more open to hearing about my like what i'm feeling they under they broke way more like more understanding too because it's like you actually have a disorder you have something that you're gonna like you know you're gonna be feeling really bad sometimes but you know i'm gonna be there for you type of thing so it's helped a lot and it's kind of strengthened i think our friendship overall i'd say the same for me dude <laughs> okay well for me it's because I'm, <laughs> I'm more trusting i'm just a badass i'd say <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh cornelius winning asks has there has there been has there been anything you wanted to do but you felt that bipolar disorder has held you back from i would also like to be tagged as my sister has bipolar and struggles with it rather hard okay um that she gets pretty hard i'm sorry damn it you better fucking edit that shit <laughs> no no it's just in <laughs> okay um okay wait no say the first part again because you fucking fuck okay me up uh, with your joke to has there been anything you wanted to do to do oh, but you okay. felt that bipolar disorder has held you back from doing okay um i don't think so really like i think the, the thing that's been holding me back is anxiety not my disorder like exactly well no actually yes relationships i guess because i'm really like i'm not looking for you know i'm not gonna date anyone right now i'm whatever about it but like in the future i'm like i don't know <laughs> what <laughs> In the future, it's kind of like, I don't know if I'm really going to, like, date anyone. <laughs> Damn it, George, I can't. <laughs> okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to really date anyone in the future. Or probably, I, I mean, I will, but, like, it's going to be really difficult to find someone who's going to be like, I understand your disorder, and I'm okay with your mood swings and your ups and downs and your psychotic symptoms sometimes. <laughs> like, I need to find someone who's really, like, understanding of that. And I think that's holding me back on that, on, like, actually finding someone ever in the future, because it's, like... You know, like he doesn't want to deal with you that. You want to find someone to crush that one? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that's what that's what you were. That was that's what you were laughing. That's why. No, because remember last time I know. with the, the crush and the puss, yeah, the Hulk I, smashing the puss. Yes, George, I remember that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like professional, George. Oh god, no, no dumb, it's, it's the dumb. <laughs> All right, uh, I think I'm skip one. Uh, no, uh, there's two more left. Okay. Jack Flinix Hedges asks, "How fast are your mood swings? Like, 
I know that each end of them lasts for quite a while, but I mean the actual transition. Transition does it take a few days, or is it more like a flicking of a light switch, or does it vary? Maybe if some some something triggers you to switch, uh, example, a very happy slash sad events, would it be faster or it be just naturally changing? For me, it's uh, I usually last being hypomanic for about a month. That's how it was. A month, so I'd be really happy, and then out of nowhere, I'd just wake up and be like, "Oh God, I am sad," and that that lasts for like about more than a month, I would say. It lasted a little, a little bit more than that, but it would, you know, go depression lasted way longer because I'm bipolar type two, which means I go through depression way more than actual feeling great and happy, which is hypomanic. Uh, for me, yeah, it lasted for like a month, being happy, and then the rest was just a few a few months uh triggers would be like that would actually like i i think i had a trigger um breakup yes it was leo yeah that was about last year and i wasn't diagnosed yet but i was really great and i no actually i was really depressed first and i tried to like commit you know suicide and then she broke up with me after that <laughs> And that was really like, what the hell, man? Like, you don't do that to someone. But like, anyway, um, I went through like a really bad depression first. And then I switched off way to like being hypomanic. And I even planned like to go see her and like all this stuff. And it's just kind of like, you know, the flick of a switch. That was the trigger. So yeah, there's people who go through triggers like that. And um, you switch really quickly. Rapid cycling is when you switch from like, like I said before, you go from like hypomanic to depression. Or you could feel mixed episodes are when you feel both of them at the same time. So you feel really sad and like despair and like you hate yourself. And then you feel like everything's like you have the energy to do stuff. So that's why, uh, what's it called? Um, suicide, suicide rates go up when people are going through mixed episodes because they have the energy to commit suicide and they have the feeling of wanting to die. So they do it. Oh yeah, for me it's just... You know, some triggers kind of mess it up, but it's okay. Okay, um, Tanner Parks finally asks, cream or cookie? What? What? Yeah, cream or cookie, the most important question of all. Cream or cookie? Yeah. What is even... I don't know, just answer it, cream or cookie. Cookie. Alright. Okay. Alright, bonus time, <laughs> since there's a lot of them that actually ended up putting more questions because I... I forgot to tell you to put a fucking date. And yeah, you didn't, you didn't do that. So, and I just checked and there's like 10 more, I think. Okay. I don't want to be a dickhead and be like, oh, no, we couldn't record it. It's like, no, it's like right here. So mm -hmm. I can just, and the motherfuckers, why do you edit it? All right. Um, Robert Promaster say, ask, can I be tagged, please? No, you cannot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, George. And one question, have you ever had anxiety attacks? Oh, heck yeah. Uh, I, let, me, let me modify that question a bit because it's, um, it's, again, a bit too simple. Uh -huh. uh, what is your earliest sign of anxiety attack and what is the most dangerous time that you had an anxiety, anxiety attack? Okay. Um, the earliest sign is usually I start feeling kind of uneasy and, like, weird. Like, I feel really jittery and, like, like I don't belong in the place where I'm at. So I start getting, like, I start moving a lot, like, fixing my position and stuff. Um... Shaking my leg is another thing that happens early on. Um, shaking my, rubbing my, rubbing my arm. That happens a lot. Rubbing my arm or my leg or something. What else? Yeah, those are the early signs of it. And I've had like a lot of anxiety attacks this past week, for weird reasons I don't really know. But the most, like, I guess the most, the one I remember the most is the one happened that last Saturday. Which was, we were in an Uber, everything was fine. It's like, you're going to take 40 minutes to get there. I'm like, 40 minutes trapped inside this car. <laughs> and I was like, oh no. And I started panicking really, really bad. And then even Melissa kept asking me, like, are you okay, man? And I'm like, yeah. Oh no, it's happening. It's yeah. happening again. Maximum overdrive. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then, yeah, she, she asked me if I was okay at first. I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. And I was like, okay, I can control this. This is fine. But then I started like hyperventilating and I started uh, shaking my leg a lot and freaking out and just, I almost blacked out actually, that's how bad it got. But you know, she asked again like if I was okay and I'm like, nope, I am not fine, I cannot go through this anymore. So we got off and then, you know, we walked around for, we walked to the sushi place and um, yeah, that was like the worst attack I've ever had because it's just, I, I felt like I was gonna die, but like, 
Just punch ten. you in the stomach, that's it. Yeah. Did you help shit? No, I would have thrown up. Exactly. No. Get it out of you. I would have like started anxiety. crying. That's the anxiety. <laughs> that's not the anxiety. <laughs> Alright, um, this one's not a question, but it's one last comment on the bottom, so, and it says, This is pretty amazing, because not, not you, fuck you. you, you edited your thing just to get at the bottom, you piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna say the name, because that's pretty mean. <laughs> this is, um, Meg Harding says, um, This is pretty amazing what you're doing. Disorders should be looked and, at and acknowledged by people around the world. Thank you for being such an amazing person. Yeah, like, that's what I want to do, because I want to... Since I have a mental illness and I have like people following me, might as well open up about it and talk about it. It'd and be more of a role model than yeah, than yeah. more just another person in, a, in the fucking tube. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, because it's like if I could set a good example and basically say you can get better because I got better, then that actually shows like there is a light at the end of the tunnel type of thing. Because it's just people... covered by a lot of rocks. So yeah, it's just kind of the light. Yeah, yeah. You can squeeze through it. Don't worry. It's, it's fine, one finger it's fine. at a time. Just gotta pop it out, put it in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i think yeah that's like great that i'm helping people all right um what the fuck was i gonna do right now uh shit i'm gonna do one last thing i fucking forgot it already i mean there's one thing i wanted to talk about go ahead okay yeah because i explained up to the point where i was in middle school right like the whole yes yeah, and then after that, in high school, you saw, you saw that I was depressed, but, like, you didn't... You, I didn't believe it. Yeah, you didn't believe it, I know. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, you didn't uh, believe it. Yeah, I... When I saw you, I didn't see someone that was depressed, because I always had thought depression was... Well, I always had known that depression was absence of feeling, because uh, my, my biological father had depression for a good amount of time, which is why some things happened in my family with that. Mm -hmm. uh, my grand, My grandma had depression, too. Okay. And she like just she left her child, mm -hmm. like she just left him for to the other family. That's it. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw that I'm like, oh, why why did you do this? Yeah. It's like there I can't feel anything. Mm -hmm. So I looked it up and it was absence of absence feeling. of feeling, and then the, the people die from it because it's the pursuit of feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I saw you, you were not absence of oh. fucking feeling. <laughs> you still felt. Yeah. You were awkward, you were fucking shy, but you still felt that. You weren't just sitting there and just waiting for shit to come. Mm -hmm. You were sitting there avoiding shit from everywhere else. Yeah. So I was like, that was my first sign. It's like, that is not depression. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let her believe it's depression because I don't know what it is myself. Mm -hmm. like, it's my misdiagnosing, but it's the closest you can do to help. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, what's it called? Middle school. I mean, middle school, high school. Like, I felt that, like, depression, I guess, but, like, it would, you, you saw it, it would go up and down a lot, like, a It would, lot. like, one week you'd be, uh, pretty sad for, like, just non-stop and yeah. make, like, super bad jokes, but <laughs> suicide, I was like, it's not funny. Yeah. Everyone yeah. else would laugh, but, like, it's not funny, it's not funny. It's that sucks. Yeah. Two out of ten joke, ha ha. <laughs> it's only two ha's. Only two ha's. Um... Yeah, uh, then other, like, a whole month, you'd just be, like, super fucking down for everything. Yeah. And, then and I was like, like why, where, where, what, why? Well, yeah. That you're depressed. I think it's more common for people to go through mood swings during their teenage years, too. Because yeah. it's like, I mean, you're a teenager and you're bipolar. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's testimony for someone who's seen you through the majority of your high school life. Yeah. Yes, you do have bipolar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, and I... It was really rocky and weird for like a good four years because, you know, the whole high school was just like not good. I had horrible anxiety. I had like, you know, ups and downs. It was it like was the time <laughs> of your life. No, everyone's like, oh, high school's the best. No, for me, it was the most terrible experience ever. I ditched most of it. I don't know what right. you guys oh, talk yeah. about. You, you did. Yeah, I did most of 12th grade. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, that's, you know, high school was just weird uh, after high school. What did I do after high school? Uh, I went to another high school, actually, another type of yeah, and I finished there because it helped my anxiety a lot. But there was like moments where I wanted to stop too because I got it really depressed and I'd be like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, what's the point? Yeah, that's that's when the when the cruel truth reality came in and it's like, yeah. oh, high school was pretty good, honestly. Yeah, and then you're just like, oh no, I'm sad now. I don't mm -hmm. care. <laughs> Yeah, and I go. I still had like you know mood swings and stuff, so it was like really bad depression where I'd just be like, I don't, I'm not gonna go this week. I don't care. And they would have to call me and be like, Are you still coming? Because you know you gotta. We have you your gotta, diploma here. Just kind of just waiting for you. I'd be like, even even my diploma was like, uh, 
Like, I didn't want to care. Because I was in that depressed mood. So, I was like... Even the goodest things that happened to you are still like, eh. Good is not a word. It's I know. Best. I know it's not. Don't point it out. <laughs> it's early. I'm tired. It's not an excuse. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, I woke up early too, fuckhead. <laughs> Fuck off. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, what, what else? After therapy, I got diagnosed about a month after. I got misdiagnosed with social anxiety and dysthymia. And then after a month, I was like, I saw the psychiatrist and she's like, oh, you're bipolar. You fall into everything. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess. Like At first, it was really hard to take in. It was really difficult to basically accept that I was actually sick. And it's a chronic illness that's going to last for your whole life. It's not going to go away. So it's going to go down. Yeah, it's going to go down to a minimal level. It's going to go back up for like a good day and it's going to go back down immediately. Yeah, it's going to go like up and down throughout your whole life. You're going to have episodes again. You're going to go through. If you ever felt you're going to feel like dying, there's a good chance it's going to happen again. But the thing is, is with therapy and medication, you're able to basically... I hope just, just stop and then yeah, wait for this shit to go because yeah. I hate not having soundproof shit around my house. Someone crashed. Uh, whatever. It's cool. That was God now. Activate my bomb, killer queen. <laughs> okay, right, go on. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna leave all this in. I don't give a fuck. Man. Okay. <laughs> this is after the question is a really important thing. Yeah. Um, that is not so important. Oh, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> See, okay. that's the type of jokes I make around her, right? <laughs> yeah. They're like super mean, but they're not like mal intended. Yeah, they're, they're just... just like, they just kind of roll. Yeah, I, I know. Like your life. <laughs> he's right, having a on. seizure <laughs> uh go on you were saying about uh, uh after you um, when you're diagnosed with bipolar because you oh, fun yeah. to everything that was bipolar mm-hmm. yeah it was really difficult to accept and then you know i went through you saw it i went through like a really big like mood fucking like yeah you were really questioning what was you yeah i, was, I didn't know what anything like because a lot of things people do is kind of like identify themselves as just the illness themselves like that's yeah, it like, I, kept, oh, I, kept, I kept trying to tell you like you you've been you for fucking 10 years shut the fuck up man yeah but it was like oh I it's can't. like no I, there's different me it's like no you don't <laughs> yeah it was really difficult and then um that's that's the biggest like hard stuff to overcome it's like the yeah. actual acceptance of you have a problem yeah because a lot of people tend to, like, run away from their issues. And it's, like, a lot of people also kind of, like, basically not accept that they're feeling stuff. <laughs> so it's kind of, like, oh, I'm sad. And it's, like, oh, I'm not really sad. Everything's fine. But it's, like, it's okay to feel sad every now and then, you know? But, like, I felt it, like, really bad. And I never really accepted it until, like, this year. And I was, like, oh, I, all these emotions are actually things that I'm not supposed to be feeling. So, yeah. Um... It got better only recently since I started on my medication, and the last time I t- attempted to kill myself <laughs> was like a really big eye opener. I was like, I don't want to die. I actually want to live, because a lot a lot of people are like they want to die only because it's like you end the suffering. But like, no. life is great, this man. Is more suffering <laughs> behind that suffering. <laughs> Uh, life is great like it life is not gonna be perfect like all the time and i'm gonna go through like really bad episodes over and over again probably for like the rest of my life which i it sucks but i mean you get better eventually. yeah you get better and then you're able to cope with it you're able to have friends with you you have like i have people on the internet who are totally like supportive too so it's like i have a lot of stuff going for me man <laughs> like i don't want to die uh, let me bring the mood down okay down uh i killed myself i almost killed myself <laughs> I have yeah. to say I killed myself. I'm not a real. I'm a ghost. <laughs> uh, I slash. I slid, slid my throats down the street. Yeah. And bled out in the middle of the street. Yeah. Uh, one happened. of my friends, he fucking found me by luck of miracle, like just randomly at like it was um it's by Mountain View. This mm. is a little street by my where I used to live. Yeah. Uh, I bled out there. Uh, he picked me up. Sent me. I kept telling him not to send him send me to the hospital because I was gonna get in trouble. I was going to get sent to, like, some fucking crazy shit. Yeah. It's like, you have depression. It's like, no, I just had problems with my girl, and then I'm the idiot. That's yeah. it. That's honestly it. <laughs> it's super petty. It's super stupid. But as someone who, who saw the light and was like, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't want that. Nah, man. Why did I do it? And, then, yeah, don't, don't. Because if you, if you do die and you go through it, you have no, no one's going to say, cool. Yeah. GG. No, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna mourn for you for around ten to twenty years, depending if they're your parents or close friends. Mm-hmm. 
And then they're probably gonna commit suicide because you're a dumbass. Yeah, pretty much. That's if like, you're the only. They're the only. Yeah, like if I if I would have done it, I'm pretty sure you would have been pissed off. I would have been mad at you. I was like, <laughs> "Fuckhead, man." Yeah, you would have been pissed off. Melissa probably. I'm I don't still know. keeping your shit though, though. Yeah, you. I, that's fine. That's the worry. first. If thing I ever, I'm doing. if I ever like accidentally die, George, you can have my stuff. I'm I'm, I'm selling all your stuff and like giving the money to your mom for your fucking funeral. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that works. But yeah, like you guys would like you would have been pissed off. Other people would have been like, "Oh my god, that actually happened," and they, uh, people were really like not good with their feelings. So it's like, that, be, like I'm pretty sure most of our friends would be like, just silence. Yeah, like they'd be like, "What?" I'd have been like, "Fuck, man, here she stay alive for two more weeks." <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. The and, reason I'm so mean about suicide is because I again from someone who's on the, almost gone through fully and almost died mm-hmm. life is just too good to live it is it's just god damn it like now that i'm like better and like i attempted it and i almost like actually jumped in front of that car it's kind of like oh wait a minute no i don't want to die i actually want to live and like you know friends and video games and all this stuff just also you, were, you did the bitch way out which is like the quick death fuck you yeah, yeah, yeah. i did the slow bleed out and actually it hurt my arm <laughs> So you're like, fuck you for your suicide attempt. Yeah, you fucking even, you, Jesus Christ. <laughs> At least do it like a man. Like a man. Just like go all down and then wait and then fucking start slowly realizing the mistakes you've done throughout your life. To the I point don't know, man. I wanted life. to go for the quick way. Fuck that. <laughs> fuck all that. I've done this enough. Like, I don't, I, I've thought about my life enough already. It's Just funny. End. It's funny because for someone that like mocks like a lot of like suicide stuff and like depression I went straight to it. Yeah. I, I didn't even go through depression You're or just like, like sad. I was like th- half an hour of being actually depressed. And then like, oh, fuck this. I'm out, man. I don't yeah. give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, okay, no, I do give a lot of fucks, but I can't feel my arm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so don't, uh, this main, the main, the main, the main thing, thing out of this is just, just don't, don't do it, you fucking pussies. <laughs> don't do it. Like, it's just like... All I know. Your pro- trust me there's no one gonna be like me that's gonna be angry at you for doing it yeah i'm gonna be very mad because you have a lot of people that like look up to you and when you do it it's most likely gonna cause a lot of them to do it oh yeah i know it's like it's weird but like you have a presence you have yes, an actual people have presence in, in the world yeah like if you do it there's a good chance that your friend is gonna be like what the hell and they're gonna live like, it- why am i here fuck this yeah GG pretty me. much like that can cause them to do it that could cause them to fall into depression yeah. not get a job not they go into like the worst cycle of like hating everything because they lost their friend yeah be, like people matter to people and they affect each other's lives very very heavily yeah so if you Surprising, ever feel isn't like it? doing it it's just like like again i'm open to messages like I, I could answer them but like you gotta like realize that you actually matter to people you actually have a presence you matter that's yeah. literally it like i can't i don't know i don't I, emphasis on that that's it yeah there's one thing that um I think we talked about this a lot before, which was this is kind of just turning into a podcast after the questionnaire thing. It's going to yeah. be a very long thing. Yes, it is. Um, but it, it should be long either way. Mm-hmm. It's like a very serious topic. Uh, not as such to a less serious topic immediately after I said that. Okay. Um, I've, I've said a lot, I said, told you a lot before in personal that um, there, like the big reason why you're really popular on the internet is because you have a big dis- in disorder and illness that's like frowned down upon the, like the world. Yeah. But you make it seem like it's not. Yeah. Like, it's not, like, a fucking problem. It's something you could overcome with enough trial and tribulation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I related to me because I don't have any of that. I'm, like, the most planned motherfucker ever. Uh-huh. Like, internet-wise, I have nothing of value to importance to me. Yeah. But I somehow could get all of you, like, into a big circle. Like, yeah, they try to understand you. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. just, I can relate it to things that, like, don't matter. Like, they're bipolar. I could relate it to having, like, six people in your, in your house. And trying yeah. to talk to all of them. Yep. And one just got through a breakup. One's throwing up in the bathroom. One's trying to burn your kitchen. Yeah, a couple yeah. That, of that's that's pretty much how bipolar is. Yeah. Also anxiety, but there too. Because mm-hmm. that fucker's burn trying to burn your kitchen. Yeah, that reminds me of the time you almost shut up. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and the point I was trying to get at across is that um, don't ever come to me for advice if you're someone I don't know. Yeah. Cause I, I I don't know what the fuck happened, but a lot of your a lot of your internet friends mm-hmm. are trying to like go to my stuff. Oh, uh, are they? I think because I keep getting random friend requests, oh. and I'm like, no, don't. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> it's like I don't know you. I don't have to know you. 
Yeah, don't talk to George. Like, cause I'm really mean when I don't know people. Yeah. Once I get to know you, I'm I'm a lot more nice, but still mean. Yeah, pretty much. This, this is this friendship is a six year friendship. This so is, this is all that's gonna happen. This is so just... it's like I'm I'm mean, but it's like nice, and there's a lot more positive messages at the end. Yeah. But if I don't know you, fuck off and die. <laughs> we just said not to kill. Yourself. <laughs> Well, kill, not kill yourself, but th- die. Okay? <laughs> okay, George. Like, call me up. Give me the knife. Let's go to Connecticut or whatever the state is to for legal oh, suicide. Legal su- and I'll murder you. It's cool. It's not murder. It's assisted suicide. It's called an AS. Why do you know this? <laughs> it came. It's the first day when I looked up assisted suicide. Oh, my God. And when I was looking up for assisted suicide, is that, um... I de- if you ever do do it and we're in your friends list, we could be considered that if I ever said shit to you. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a, it's a very fucking disgusting way of, of bleeding your, fr- like, of parent bleeding friends out of money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's all I, I was looking that up. Oh, okay, that's why. So, okay. Yeah. Also that, if, um, if your whatever friend pisses you off and you're like, fuck them, I want to ruin their family, kill yourself <laughs> and then have your parents sue them. Yeah, you could... <sighs> Damn it. <laughs> okay, George, it's over. <laughs> We're done. All right. Um, ne- literally, next time on Couch Party Games, we will actually play games again. Yeah, this is more like a, serious and like yeah, people. I will tag people who wanted to see this. Tag so. Satan in it. Sure. Like, tag just Satan. Look up Satan on Facebook. He's like, you're tag telling him. people not to kill themselves. There's no, yeah, less people just in Just wait till the end. Just wait till the end. No, uh, don't no, worry. No. I make it pretty clear. <laughs> Die. <laughs> No. I need jobs, right? I need a job. You're working at McDonald's. Uh, you have depression. I could have. I could. Have. Can I have that job? Just saying. Can I have? Here's a noose. <laughs> oh my god. Again, this is again suicide humor, but I, there's no malintent. Yeah. I just don't. say because I really need a job and I'm pathetic and I can't find a job. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Um. This has been George. Uh, and that's Susan over there. Yeah, Susan. Say stuff. Uh, yeah, just no, I like say stuff. Oh, stuff. All right, you're welcome. All right, yeah. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I just want to say like thanks for like this is like an hour long type of thing. Yes. So yeah, like if you watched everything not, <laughs> without breaks, then congrats. You, I'm gonna edit some of this yeah. out. There's some. There's yeah, some, there's some like, stuff. There's some stuff where like we took a small break breaks and stuff fucking like that. Stuff in the air, shit. But yeah, that's it. I could just like leave this all unedited. You could, but like, there's like sirens and like. I know. It's really long. I know. <laughs> Don't be lazy, George. Fuck. Remember, we we, we wanted this to be like I'm a so real thing. Lazy. You're, you're just so lazy. No. <laughs> you don't understand the power of my laziness. <laughs> it's not depression. I'm just very lazy. <laughs> I'm too lazy to be depressed. Oh my god. Sadness? Nah. I'm oh, tired. Ah, yeah. oh, so comfortable. <laughs> Alright, I'm leaving ladies to end this video. Alright, um Yeah, that's it. Bye. <laughs>